All right, welcome. Today I'm going to be going through uh, King of Pain, which is a it's a pretty complicated arrangement. I mean, it's a pretty complicated song, even though it comes across like any other pop song on the radio, maybe. Um, it's it's pretty complicated. Uh, there are variations, kind of every verse and every chorus, um, at least small variations. But it really builds. Uh, it's got a great kind of two part bridge at the end. There's a whole other melody that comes in. It's a, it's a really great tune. But it, uh, it took some work to arrange, and it takes some work uh, to play it. I hope you have fun. So today I'm gonna um, I'm gonna uh, zoom in uh, both on this hand and on this hand. Uh, so this, this is the last you'll see of my face. Okay, I uh, hope you find this useful. As always, let me know if there's anything I can do uh, to make this more useful for you. All right, here we go. Right from the beginning, uh, this is a tricky part, okay? Because uh, you're doing these power chords to, at the very beginning. And you hit these harmonics. Um, seventh fret on the D and G strings. And you want to keep that G string ringing out, even though you're playing on the D string right after it. that ringing out uh, as you're doing this power chords okay and then the next part you go down here to introduce the melody and again you want to let things ring out you want to let the high E string ring out at the end of that phrase so even you even though you're doing the same power chords down here those power chords with that E string ring out as much as you can. And again, you want to let that ring out. As long as you can. I mean, these, these chords here, um, which is a nice little variation by, by Sting, there. It's a little hard to hit those while letting that E string ring out, but if you can. Again. That's the last of the introduction. And then you go to uh, the first chorus, which is, it's the only chorus like this. It's actually my favorite <laughs> of the choruses. It doesn't have the backbeat yet, but you're muting, you're muting the bass strings with your thumb, but you're letting the strings on the top ring out. Uh, and it's really nice if you can get that, if you can get the muting of the bottom string, so. While letting the, the melody on the upper strings ring out, so. Like that. And then uh, when the, introducing the backbeat is a, is an interesting little variation where normally the snare hits on two and four, as it usually does in rock songs. But to introduce the backbeat, Mr. Stuart Copeland hits it on the four end instead of the four. So. Got it? So that first one, okay, so right at the beginning there is one, two, three, four, and. Once again, one, two, three, four, and. If you can get that, it's really nice. It's a really cool introduction to the song. Just so just a little bit off really perks your attention up. And then we're into the verse with the backbeat. So I'll do that again. One, two, three, four. And when you're doing that little, that's my soul up there part. Da -da 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 -da. It's nice to bring down the dynamic just a little bit, uh, so it kind of reflects the fact that it's a background vocal, so. Bring it down just a little bit. You know, 
it's a little bit a little bit faint and the rest of that first <laughs> into the uh, the second chorus now with the backbeat uh, pretty straightforward that is then into the second second verse and this time the backbeat just hits on the four After that, I play it pretty much like the first verse, except that um, at the end of each phrase, I add a little bit more of the bass kind of flavor, the little sting. Add just a little bit, uh, a little bit more to it there, um, just to raise the excitement a bit. So from the beginning of that, one, two, yeah, one, two, three. You know, I add something like that. something there on the G. Again, just to raise the excitement just a little bit. And then we're back to the, the chorus, second chorus. Now to raise, uh, to raise the excitement here just a little bit, I'm doing some strums when I hit the G. So. string. So you don't, you don't want to hit the E string when you do those strums. Um, so. so when I'm hitting when I'm hitting that back beat right before it, I'm hitting down stroke there and then following with that. do it something I'll do I think in my video I did it on the first and third times but throw it in there if you want to it's just a nice way to just add a bit of variation we're on to the bridge which is an A so there's a key change so here at the end there is the there's a skeleton. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, it's tricky, but it's nice to get that little phrase in there. There's a skeleton. Pull off on the E, or rather on the B string. The E on the B string. Dun, 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 dun. Pull off in there. Right after your backbeat. Then we're onto the solo, which is uh, very interesting. <laughs> so at the end there. Try to, you know, try to make that as, as smooth as you can, so you can really continue that line. So that's the last note there. Is the F sharp on the B string uh, with this bar, and then we're into the solo. So, and you're going up there to the E, all the way to the E, the twelfth fret there. And then here it's just it's a pretty big stretch, and it's tricky to hit these notes. But it's it's uh, it's nice if you can do it. Um, when I was practicing the tune, getting ready to record it, I really just uh, recorded the uh, or rather practiced the solo by itself before adding the bass note. So I did it. I did a lot of practicing of this on its own uh, before adding the bass note or the backbeat. 
Um, but now adding just the bass note, not yet the backbeat. Okay, and then with the backbeat, so. Like that. Then go down, uh, down an octave, down to the king of pain. Going to the second part of the bridge, which is very interesting. It's hitting this C sus chord. I'm just kind of riding on that. And uh, in the recording, uh, these kind of uh, ethereal high notes, uh, they're, well, they're played high. I decided to play them low to keep in the same octave down there just to make a contrast with what we were just playing. So you're riding on that sus. Again, let them ring out really makes it effective. And then it slides back into the regular verse. So you'll notice on the recording that the bass drops out also during this part. So, it, so we're echoing that after the last one. slide here which kind of echoes the very beginning with those power chords but it's nice also to keep uh, those open strings ringing out again as long as possible so and then bring in your background vocals then doing it again but now with a slightly different chord background. And then we move on to, um, to, uh, to sort of a solo vocal part, which I chose to do in, in natural harmonics. Uh, and it works out well. It's nice when that happens. <laughs> Starting out um, with, uh, on the D string, you're playing an A at the seventh fret, and then a B over here on the twelfth fret, a C sharp over here. On the, on the A string, and then on your uh, G string, playing a D, finally with an E there on the 12 strings. So, that's the last one, it's the F sharp there, on the B string at the seventh fret. Obviously let them ring as long as you can. Uh, try not to damp each individual one, and then, and then. And then slowly introduce your bass note. You know, let that ring out nicely and then build it up from that F sharp to your G to the last chorus, which is very much like the, um, like the second chorus. Final variation, adding in a new melody. So there, first you're echoing the melody from the very, very, very beginning. That's the melody I'm talking about. Introduced there. And then here that F sharp. You're leaving the B string open. The B string open. Play your G. That G major seventh right there. And I chose to just 
kind of end it like that, kind of doing a little pull off there and ending with a D add nine. All right, so it took me a while to, to work this thing out um, and to learn how to play it, uh, but it's really fun. There's some really cool parts in there. Even if you just pick out little individual sections like the harmonics or that little muting part in the beginning. Again, is my favorite part. I'm sure you'll find some cool stuff, some fun stuff to do. So good luck, as always. Um, let me know if you have any questions. All right.